Hi, I'm David Carlton, and what I'm going to do today is give you some quick tips and techniques to improve your solder technique. This video is geared towards the model railroader, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, to start out with, we're going to talk about the tools and materials that you need to complete the soldering process. The first and most important tool that you'll need is a solder iron. This iron is a temperature adjustable solder iron. Here you see the knob that will allow you to adjust your temperature according to the size of the work that you're working on. Obviously if you're using a soldering two uh, 22 gauge wires in place, you'll need lower temperature. If you're soldering a feeder wire to say a bus wire of 14 gauge, then you'll need a little bit more temperature. Another important feature of the solder iron is to have adjustable interchangeable tips. In this case, we're going to remove the barrel and the tip, and we can replace the tip with the size tip that we need for our work. In this case, if I'm working on a 14 gauge bus wire, I want to use a larger tip. I also have other tips available, such as a needle nose tip. If I'm using, if I'm installing a decoder with say 28 gauge wire. Next, we're going to talk about solder. Here I have a I have two different size solder wires. This one is a flux cord 31 thousandths inch diameter solder wire. And this one is a 15 thousandths inch diameter solder wire. Again, I use the solder wire size according to the size of the work that I'm soldering. Next, we'll talk about wire strippers. Here I have two different types of wire strippers. One is a manual wire stripper gauged for 30 to 20 gauge wires. And then I have an automatic set of wire strippers gauged for 24 to 16 gauge wires. This is a really nice stripper because it will hold the wire in place as the jaws close around the wire to strip the insulation. And it automatically strips the insulation from the wire. Next we have a selection of various cutting tools. This is a an angled flush cutter and a flat sided flush cutter. And also we want to make sure we have flat nose, needle nose type pliers. Now to hold wires in place when we need to, we also use a set of reverse tweezers. Next we want to make sure we have something to hold our work in place as we solder. Here we have a bench vise that I use to hold my soldering, the wires that I'm soldering together in place so that the wires do not move in relation to each other. Lastly, in order to move, remove solder that has been applied to a connection, I have solder wick and, a, and liquid solder flux. One important point is that I do not use the liquid solder flux on original connections. The solder flux inside the flux cord wire usually is enough flux to complete the connection. I will only use the liquid flux when removing solder from a connection. Next, we're go I'm going to demonstrate how to strip a 22 gauge wire. This is a 22 gauge stranded wire. Now stripping a stranded wire and a solid wire is the same process. What we're going to do is take our stripper tool. These are automatic. This is an automatic die stripper. Put it in the 22 gauge slot. Close the jaws very gently. And as the jaws close, they tighten down on the wire. They clamp down on the wire. We're just going to separate the insulation so that it breaks the insulation. Next, we're going to, going to t grab the slug of the wire, and as you pull the slug of insulation off, give it a gentle twist to keep the lay of the strands tight. 
and as it comes off, you'll see the, stranded, the strands of the wire. Personally, I like working with solid wire better. It's easier to form, but there are applications where you have to use stranded wire. For example, if this wire were going to be attached to a control panel that's on hinges or any other places where the wire has to remain flexible or any type of movement, you want to use stranded wire. But for the most part, I use solid wire. One of the problems with stranded wire is of using stranded wire is you do have to tin it. Now tinning means applying solder along the strands so that the wire itself acts as a solid wire. It makes it much easier to form and much much easier to work with when you're getting ready to solder this wire to another wire or some surface that needs to be soldered. Next thing I'm going to do is demonstrate how to tin a stranded wire. We've just stripped our stranded wire. The reasons you want to tin a stranded wire is because when you go to form your wire, the, if it's not tin, the wire is going to splay in all different directions. The tinning helps it act like it's a solid wire. So we're going to put it in our vise like this. Earlier I talked about the solder iron, the features that you want to see have on a good solder iron. Um, right now I want to show you how to use your solder iron. We're going to turn the solder iron on, and I like working at a, when I'm working with 22 gauge wires, I like working at around 700 degrees setting. When the light flashes, that means your solder iron is hot and ready to go. The way you use your solder iron is, number one, don't touch any of the metal pot part. It, you'll find that it's very hot. Second thing, we want to have a damp sponge, not soaking wet, but damp, so that we'll have a good surface, a good sponge, a damp sponge, to clean our tip with. Wipe the tip so that it's you get a good smooth surface on your tip when you're ready to solder. To protect your tip, when you're finished soldering, what you do is to you apply a bead of solder from your solder wire, put it back in your holder, and then turn off your solder iron. Okay, to tin the stranded wire, we put the wire in the vise to free up our free up my hands so that I can hold the solder wire and the solder iron. To prepare your solder iron, wipe the tip on a damp sponge to get all the little solder balls off your tip. Next, I'm going to hold the tip underneath the wire so that I can see where I'm tinning the wire. And I'm going to apply the solder wire to the tip where the, wire, the stranded wire touches the tip and get the solder flowing. And then I'm going to draw the tip down towards the bottom, towards the end, to tin all of the stranded wire. Next thing I want to demonstrate is how to splice wires. What I'm going to do is form the lead by bending it into the shape that I want it to be in order to splice. What I like use to use is a 180 degree bend. And you see how it's a bend, it's not a sharp corner. The wire is bent in a U shape. In order to splice the wire, I'll need to trim off the excess to give the wire its U shape. This is my technique for splicing two wires. I have my two tinned wires. I've formed each wire in, into a hook so that the wires hook together. And you notice that one wire is mounted into the blocks on my uh, bench vise. I'm going to squeeze the wire into the spring so that two wires are held together tightly and do not move. Typically what I'll do then next is tighten the 
hooks just a little bit so that the wires grip each other tightly. You'll notice there's no movement of either wire. If I touch the wire with a solder iron, the wires will not fall apart. To solder a connection, the key to a good soldered connection is getting ready to set up for the solder connection. We have here your wire attached into the bench vise at this end. This end is attached on this mounting spring that holds the other wire so that your connection doesn't move when I touch the iron to the connection. The second key point is finding a place to steady your hands. I can either rest my hand on the vise, I can rest my elbow on the table, I can use my finger, but you want to have a good steady hand when soldering with a solder iron. You combine that with a good steady connection that doesn't move, that will allow you to form good connections. So, I'm going to take my solder iron, wipe the tip on the sponge to have a good smooth tip, a good smooth tip. I'm going to steady my hand with either my finger or elbow on the bench vise, and then I'm going to touch the solder iron to both wires at the same time. Next thing, I'm going to take my solder wire and form what's called the heat bridge. That's where I touch my solder wire to both the tip and the two wires at the same time and get the solder flowing. As the solder flows, I feed the solder to, from the other side. And once I see that I have enough solder, I remove the tip. The key to good soldering is you don't move the tip around. Once you place it on your irons to be your items to be soldered, you leave it in place. Okay, next I'm going to demonstrate how to solder a feeder wire to a rail. And this obviously is not part of a layout. But typically, on your layout, you'll drill the holes next to the rails where your feeder wires are installed. Here, I've, in, I've fed the wire through the hole so that the tin wire is next to the rail. And what, we're, what I'm going to do is form it into a shape that where it will lay against the web of the rail. That wire is just a little bit long, so I'm going to trim it off just a little bit. I'm going to take my flat nose pliers and form it. Now one trick I like to do is when you're holding the wire with your pliers, push up against the wire so that the wire has something to push against and will hold in place against the rail. Remember, one of the key points of soldering is you don't want your work to be moving when you touch it with your iron tip. Next, I'm going to wipe my tip on my sponge, as mentioned before, get a good clean iron tip. My hands are free. One hand holding the solder iron, one hand is holding the solder wire. I'm going to find a place where I can rest my hand so that the iron is steady. I'm going to pick a spot where I can apply the tip. And once I apply it between the rail and the wire, I'm going to leave it in place. Do not move the solder tip, solder iron tip around because then you won't have very good heat transfer. Feed the solder at the junction of the tip and the wire and get the solder flowing. 
once it's flowing, you can see how much solder you're feeding. When you have enough solder, remove your iron and your solder wire, and your connection is formed. Protect your tip with your solder wire and put your iron back in the holder. Now I'm going to demonstrate how to remove solder from a connection. We have our solder wick. This is nothing more than copper braid that when it gets hot it sucks up solder very well. We have our liquid solder flux and what I'll do is apply just a drop of flux to the solder wick. The flux will help the solder flow to the wick. Here we have a soldered connection, a feeder to a rail, and we're going to remove this wire from the, from the rail. Okay, our solder iron is on. We're going to wipe the tip to get all the excess solder off the tip so it's nice and smooth and shiny. We have the flux applied to our solder wick. We're going to lay the wick right across where the solder is and press that wick into the solder. And as soon as that solder heats up and melts, the wick will draw the solder away. You can move the iron around just a little bit to help it get started flowing. But you can see it drawing into the wick. And as soon as all of the solder is removed, remove your iron and your iron and your wick. We want to try to make sure to get all of the solder out. Sometimes you have to go back with your solder wick a second time. Let's try to get the solder out there. The wire's broken. There we go. The, wire, the solder's removed. And the wire is free. If you have to re-solder in the same location, I like to go back and clean up the spot where the solder was, where that old wire was. Just do put more flux on your wick and clean up the last little bit of solder that's on that rail and you'll have a nice clean soldered surface for the next wire that you're going to add back to the old location. I hope the tips that you've seen today will help you in, improve your soldering technique as a model railroader. I tried not to get too very technical but I tried to give you some basic ideas on the things you need to do to improve your solder technique. Going over these tips, remember to select a tip size, the same size as the work that you're working on. Also, do not use too much flux. The flux that's in your flux cord solder should be plenty if you have a good solderable wires and leads to solder to. Also, make sure you support your hands as you're getting ready to place your iron on your work. Keep your hands steady. That's very important, a very important soldering technique. Finally, make sure that when you place that iron tip on your work that you leave it in place and do not move it around. Too much movement will prevent good heat transfer between the tip and the work. We want to get that solder flowing, and once you see the solder flowing, feed just enough solder to where you get have some good fillets so that you see the right amount of solder on your connection. Remove the solder wire and then the solder iron, and you should have a good connection. We hope that these tips help you in your model railroading endeavors.